everybody. Welcome to Xavier Fox Talks, and I am your host, Xavier Fox. Today, I am here talking with Mr. Alan Wesley. He's the author of this wonderful book here, Who is the Man in Your Bed? What is your oh, key here. point? Oh, chapter 6 is my, is my favorite chapter. In, in chapter 6, I talk about the fact that women seem so rushed to get into relationships and as you're rushing into the relationship that there's a lot that you're missing and uh, you know you're not checking uh, what he's saying you know hey, I, I can tell someone I'm, I'm, I'm divorced and, and I understand that woman wants to as Chris pointed out earlier you want to believe the guy but it's not like that anymore unfortunately so you, you have to take your time um, to get into the relationship Finding out exactly who this person is. Again, we're not all that we say we are, you know? And um, you have to do that. You have to take your time. Uh, if he tells you a couple of things about himself, great. You need to check that. And so the biggest thing for me that women should take away here is go slowly into a relationship. Uh, make sure and do those checks. Make sure that you get to know the guy before you just jump into bed with him. Because once you jump into bed with the guy quickly, it's pretty much game over, right? Uh, he's just ready to move on. Right, right. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's the thing they said on the the. Uh... So, Fish, what is if you had to choose one thing or something that maybe didn't help or? probably the part of the book you didn't like or was there something he told you that you didn't want to hear? Tell me <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Well, <clears throat> I'll admit um, my um, my last marriage was pretty pretty. I, I, it, he was a professional cheater, bottom line. And so okay. I really did not want to read the book because I knew like something in the pit of my stomach was just going to bother me. Um I thought that the book would drudge up all those feelings I had about um, how unfair that marriage was. But I guess what I just didn't like was just seeing on paper just the true dishonesty of men and women, because women are guilty of that, too. It's, it's not one-sided. But I just, it's a reality, but I hated it, hated to see that because I'm such an eternal optimist. So I like to look for the good and the positive and the love, and I'm all about the wonderful stories, but the reality is I know it's not like that. And seeing um, the very, very end where the different stories were of the different cheating scenarios, all I could do was just suck my teeth and shake my head like, wow, this really does um, go on. What was funny, though, was uh, the story that you told about how I think you had gone out to lunch with a friend and his wife, and the 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 friends right. got that phone call and you kind of okay. covered and saved him. I've seen that happen. I've been in that scenario before. I was like, wow, it just never stops. So it's just for the short version of that. So the, the friend received a phone call from the mistress and mm -hmm. the friend looked distressed and the wife was sitting there and, and he didn't want to answer the call and ruffle her feathers. So Alan picks up on this and covers for the friend and says, you know, that might be Joe because he's been calling me all day trying to figure out what we're doing tomorrow. So don't worry about it. I'll call him later. You don't have to get that. He's like, yeah, yeah, I don't, I didn't, and then he didn't answer the phone. Uh, now, with that scenario <laughs> then, so is, is all of this cheating possible because men cover for each other? Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Alan? <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, so, so some of us do. But I wanted to get back to what Trish uh, mentioned earlier in terms of being uncomfortable. And she's not the only woman who has said that to me. And actually, I, I knew that this was going to happen. And in the book, I mentioned that, that, you know, the truth is sometimes very unpleasant. It's very uncomfortable. It's very discomforting. And, but, but you need to care. You need to know what it is. You know, some women are still naive in that regard. In, in fact, I have a very good friend who she said, I'm only going to purchase the book just to support you because a lot of what you've written about or, you know, based on all discussions, I really don't want to hear it again because 
Someone did this to me, and it's very painful for me to try and read that again on paper. So I, I can definitely understand where this is coming from with that. But you know what? In addition to being uncomfortable, I really was very thankful because at I feel like you were very honest with me. I didn't grow up with my brothers in the house with me. I didn't grow up with my dad in the house with me. And I really pretty much learned everything I learned either at church or by the school of hard knocks. So wow. as much as I was uncomfortable, I was very appreciative as well. Okay, um, thank you. Alan, I would like to know, and I ask this question all the time, in your opinion, how did relationships get to this point? I mean, is it the shortage of men? Is it the desperation of women? What? How did we get to this point? That, that's a very good question. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I know the exact answer to that, but I, I think it's a combination of, of the factors you just put out there in terms of uh, the desperation on behalf of, the, of some of the women, not all women are desperate. And uh, I, I think the fact that there, there are a lot of women out there to choose from, and, and uh, guys, perhaps, uh, there is this thing within some of us to just go hunting, pretty much, uh, you know, chasing me after women. So it's just, it, it has really gotten bad, the, the whole relationship landscape. And again, when I wrote that book, my daughters were at my forefront in terms of, wow, I really need to protect them from this because this is how it is. I mean, everything in that book is factual. It's based on reality, something that I experienced, or my friends experienced, or you know, other women friends of mine. So it's, it's very unfortunate, but it's the fact. That's what's out there. Okay. And so I'm going to give you an opportunity to just tell us what you want us to know about the book. You know, give us your website, give us inside information, all of that stuff where people can buy the book. Uh, Okay, well, the, the, the book is called, um, I think we have it, you know, Who is the Man in Your Bed? That's the, that's the name of the book. And um, my website is whoisthemaninyourbed.com. The book is available online, Amazon.com, Bands and Nobles, iUniverse.com. Pretty much any online book uh, resell, the book's located there. Now, I wanted to point out that this book is the first of two books. Um, Trish, since you're my friend on Facebook, you would notice that most of my postings are providing information to, to women. Again, warning them about relationships. The second book is, is not going to be as uncomfortable sometimes as, as this first book, but I thought it was necessary to lay the foundation with this book so that women are aware of the fact that this is how some guys can be. Uh, one of the saddest things to me, you know, as a guy, is to see a woman who is naive being taken advantage of. And again, I spin that around and think, oh, I don't want that to happen to my daughter. But unfortunately, it, it happens. So this book is basically saying, look, while not all guys are like this, there are guys out there who do exactly what this book says. You need to be aware of that. And in my second book, I start talking more about the positive aspects of if you're in a relationship, how can you improve upon your relationship? Uh, how do you deal with heartache and you know, different things like that. But it's not as, uh, as hard enough as this book was. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to that. So if you could sum up the book, what would you say? I would say all oh, mothers, daughters, aunts, um, everyone needs to go and get this book because it really, it's a help if you have um, a father figure in your life that's taught you um, these principles. It's just to add, it will just add what you already know. If you have never had that um, that lesson before, then this is a great book. And it's not, it's not intrusive. It's more like just a friend talking to you saying, hey, these are the things you might want to look for. Here are your options. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it isn't. But here are your choices. So I, I like that approach. So what, what have your guy friends said, Alan? Did, did they tell you that you broke the man code? They, they say. <laughs> he doesn't have any more guy friends. <laughs> well, the thing about that is um, some of them give me a hard time. But again, the book 
who's going to be at which guy, the guys who are going to be at Federer are going to look like that, they are the guys who are doing stuff like that, okay? And um, so they can be upset, that, that's not my issue. But uh, some guys who have daughters totally embrace the book from that perspective. Again, because it helps their daughters. And, you know, you, you have all these players out there, these guys, they have sisters, you know, they have daughters. They do not want a guy running the same tricks that they run as other women on their relatives or daughters. Yes, that's true. Right, yeah, I've heard, yeah, I've heard that before too. Uh, one of the oh yeah, that's just the way that happened. One of the co-hosts on the other show, he said once he had girls and he got, he, you know, it seems like the guys that are the biggest players wind up with daughters. And he said yeah. he hopes that the daughter, <laughs> the daughter doesn't have, have to pay for the sins of the father. So, yeah, these, these books kind of give us a head up, heads up. Well, anything else you'd like to say, Miss Tish? Well, I, again, just want to say thank you. It was very informative. And as, as much as, I again, I said I was uncomfortable, I was more appreciative. And, and I really enjoyed the book. Anything else you'd like to say, Mr. Wesley? Well, I just want to thank you again for having me on the show, and um, I, I really hope that the women who are listening go out and, and get this book. Again, very, very informative book for them, and uh, look forward to my second book. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us, and I have to ask you, where are you from? Because you know I hear the accent. Oh, yeah, you can't get away from that. I'm um, actually originally from Tobago, as in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, okay, okay. And how long have you been in the States? Oh, uh, well, now I'm going to give my age away, but um, <laughs> I've, I've been here since 1987, I believe, 1987. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, so the accent, because the accent is still pretty strong, mm -hmm. so the accent just... They are <laughs> All right, well, thanks again for joining us, and, um, and um, you know, you broadened my horizons, too, because I really didn't know how this whole Skype interview thing was going to work. I feel like we, you know gotten into the technological area era and so Xavier Fox has grown a little bit thanks to you okay thank you all right well I shall talk to you later I'll see you on Facebook that's right yes thanks all right okay, bye, -bye. bye bye okay thank you all right well I shall talk to you later I'll see you on Facebook that's right yes thanks all right okay bye bye, -bye. bye. Thanks for tuning in again to Xavier Fox Talks. And I'd like to thank my guest here. I guess she was my co-host for today. Yes. <laughs> uh, who took the time to read the book because with all the editing and, you know, just life stuff, I just didn't get a chance. So now that Mr. Wesley is gone, okay. is there anything you'd like to say now that he's not sitting here listening? Um, no, you know what, really, I want to say more to you, thank you. I, I think it was really um, God's divine order for me to read the book because um, there were some things that I had to address in my personal life recently. And <clears throat> one of the things, and I know you heard me say this um, in one of our sister circle panels before, where there's some things I have to clean out. Mm -hmm. And I think that You're the unfinished cake. That's right. I'm I'm still baking my middle, <laughs> so I can be com the complete birthday cake. But I think that that marriage, this I still had residue there, and the book helped me to clear it out. So as much as I didn't want to read it because I knew I was going to get that knot in my stomach, um, I had it for a little while. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And when it was over, it was over. I felt completely freed and released. And even even validated um, that for myself that I wasn't gullible as I had always been labeled, per se, because it had always been said that, you know, you just don't pay attention or you just don't. And it's none of that. It's, I choose to, to address certain things and I choose not to address certain things. But I think this book really helped me to see that when I decided I wanted to hit the nail on the head, address it, and take action, I did. I may not have addressed the emotions and the grief and the mourning in the proper way with that, but this book really helped me to do that. So now I feel like I can tell that story and I don't have heartache behind it. I'm not ashamed. Um, and going forward, I'm informed because had I not read that book, um, 
But before that relationship, I didn't read that book, so I was not informed. But having been in that situation and read this book, I feel empowered and informed. Well, Dr. Loxie, I see you. This girl, this fox, thinks she don't eat her loaded yam, the whole thing. But that ain't going on. Jimmy Jam gonna smash it. With my guest, Xavier the Fox, from Xavier Fox Talks. And you can tell everybody what you want to be called by. Xavier Fox here, still on the red carpet. Represent X.